This video will show you how to solve quadratic equations by using the square root method. You already know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring, but these are special equations. Notice it just says x squared equals 25. There is no plain old x term here. If you want to undo something squared, you just need to do the opposite, which is take the square root of both sides. So when you take the square root of x, we get x. Now over here I have a plus or minus, and you may not understand why there's a plus or minus there, but it has to do with this idea. Just think about this. What can you square to get 25? Well, you could square 5, but you also could square negative 5. That's why we need a plus or minus. The real reason we need the plus or minus is the definition of the square root of x squared equals the absolute value of x, because we don't know if x was positive or negative. So the absolute value covers both those possibilities. Rather than having to write this absolute value sign every time, just remember, when you solve by applying the square root to both sides, you want to remember to put that plus or minus sign there. All of these that we're going to do in this video are going to be solved by taking the square root of both sides. They won't all be that simple, but it's all going to boil down to taking the square root. On this one, notice that we don't have x squared equal to something, but we can make that happen very easily by just adding 36 to both sides, which will give us x squared equals 36. We'll do the same thing we did a second ago, take the square root of this side, take the square root of that side, and because it's square root, we're going to remember to put the plus or minus, and the square root of 36 is 6. x squared minus 32 equals 0, same process. Let's add the 32 over to the other side because we want to have this x squared item isolated. We want this alone because this is the key that says, let's do the opposite to solve. The opposite of squaring is taking the square root. Now with that, we're gonna get a plus or minus. Also, the square root of 32, unlike the last couple ones, is not a perfect square, but it is something we can factor tree out. Here's your tree on 32. We have two different pairs of twos. So we have a two times a two, which is a four coming out with that 2 staying in. So, so our answer will be plus or minus 4 times the square root of 2. Same idea here. Let's get the x squared alone. Do the opposite, which is subtract 12 from both sides, and it gives us this. Undo the squaring by doing the opposite, which is square rooting. And now this brings us back to something from a little while ago. The square root of a negative produces an i. So right off the bat, I know I'm pulling an i out, and I also know there's a plus or minus in front of that. So this becomes plus or minus i radical 12. Well, 12 needs to be factored treat out. Here it is. Here's a pair of 2's. So there's a 2 coming out, and there's going to be a 3 staying in. And this is the order your answer needs to be in the plus or minus in the front, the 2, and then the i, and then the square root. So if there's a coefficient, it needs to be in front of the i. Now, this is no longer plain old x squared, but it is something squared. If we want to undo something squared, we're still going to do this, take the square root of both sides. The square root of x minus 4 squared is just going to be x minus 4. Over here, the square root, we're going to get the plus or minus 3. So there it is looking a little neater. To solve this, we need to do the opposite to get the x alone. So we want to add 4 to both sides. And you need to be careful right here. When you add 4 to plus or minus 3, it is not plus or minus 7. This has to be written this way, 4 plus or minus 3. So the 4 that you put over here goes in front of the plus or minus. Now you need to do what I call the high road and the low road. If you use the high road, that's coming up this way, which is our 4 plus 3. If you use the low road, that's coming along the bottom, and that's going to be the 4 minus 3. So here's the two parts written out. Here's your high road. That's across the top using the plus. Here's your low road across the bottom using the minus. And all we have to do is the arithmetic. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 minus 3 is not negative 7. It's 1. And we can check these. Put 7 back in here. You don't even have to write it down. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Put a 1 there. 1 minus 4 is negative 3 but negative 3 squared is positive 9, so it checks. Same idea here. We're going to undo this squaring by doing the opposite, which is square root. But this time we're going to end up with something we have to do with the 12. We have our plus or minus, square root of 12. To do this 12, you have to think about the tree on the 12, and you can do that on your own. You have a pair of 2's and a 3 staying in. All we have to do now is add this 5 to both sides. 
and it's not 5 plus 2 is 7. 2 radical 3 and 5 are not like terms. Write it as 5 plus or minus 2 radical 3. And I understand you probably don't want to check this with the square root, and that's okay. Similar problem. Let's undo this by square rooting both sides. When we do that, because we've taken the square root, this is when we pick up the plus or minus. This is the square root of negative 15. The square root of a negative produces an i. We look at the square root of 15, and if you do a factor tree on that, there are no pairs, so there's no reason to break that down. The last step now is going to be to subtract this 4 from both sides. Same idea, the negative 4 and the i radical 15 are not like terms, so all we can do is write it this way, and that is our solution. Now we have a coefficient in front of here. We always want to solve these something or other things squared by taking the square root. You don't want to take the square root now. The first thing you want to do is divide out that 3, which is going to give us this. It needs to be down to something squared so that we can undo it by square rooting both sides. When we square root this left side, we just get x minus 5. The square root of negative 3 is still here. On the next step, I'm going to take the i out of this because the square root of a negative produces an i. 3 will not factor tree out, so that's the best we can do here. All that's left is to add 5 to both sides. 5 and i radical 3 are not like terms. All you can do is write them together, and that's your answer. Similar problem to what we just said a minute ago. We have a coefficient here, and this really needs to be something squared. So we need to get rid of this 2. So let's divide both sides by 2. Those 2's will cancel out, and we're just down to x minus 1 squared equals 4. As soon as it's just something squared, we're going to do the opposite, which is square root both sides which gives us x minus 1 equals plus or minus 2. And then we need to get this x alone by adding 1 to both sides. And once we've moved the 1 over, it says 1 plus or minus 2. Because these are whole numbers, this is the time to do the high road and the low road. So the high road will be a 1 plus 2, and the low road will be a 1 minus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So the only time you have to think about the high road and low road simplifying process is if these are both integers. If you have an i or you have a radical, you can't do that.